Okay, we are back. Um, first uh, lesson in assignment number two, I talked about the four kind of basic um, or most common probably types of um, variables that we use in programming, and so integer, string, bool, and decimal. And so we had our UI set up um, like this. We're going to change, make some small changes here. What we're going to do is we're going to take this string and we're just going to drag it out of the way. We're going to move this integer over here going to put the string first um, just because we're going to change what they display we're going to actually have pretend like we had a database that had um, student name uh, integer is going to be replaced by it's still going to be an integer but phone number um, I know phone numbers aren't normally integers but without decimal or without the dashes they are bool is going to say if we're registered or not and decimal is going to just kind of tell us how much the student has paid and so let's uh, change that string name. We'll leave, we'll leave the name the same, but we'll change the text actually. And so I'm just going to call that text name now, just so we know what we're working with. Um, integer value here. We're going to change that quickly to uh, phone number. Uh, let's just use the number sign uh, here. Bool, we're going to change to registered and decimal, we're going to change to um, paid. Okay, and obviously, if this was a real scenario, we'd probably have a label separate that would actually show that here. But just for our reference, we know this is going to be name, phone number, if they're registered or not, and then how much they've paid. So we're going to make a few changes to the back end as well. So when we go to the code behind here, uh, we're going to what's called we're going to comment out this whole section of code. We're not going to use this code anymore, but I still want it to exist. Uh, this is handy sometimes when we're debugging or testing things. Uh, you want the code to still be there, but we don't want to delete it. But we don't need it. We don't want it to run. And so to comment out a large section of code. If I want to do one line and comment it out, I could all just do something like this, and I could do that through all the lines there. But a larger section, in order to comment that out, what we want to do is we want to do a slash, star, and then go down to the bottom of where we want to comment out, star, slash. And then that whole section you can see now is green, and that means it's commented out. Okay, so uh, the first type of array that we wanted to deal with was a string array. And so we use that string keyword again. But this time after the string, I don't think we even need spaces, what we need to do is a square brackets. Okay? And then we'll just call this student names. Okay? And so I can declare um, a string just like that, which is going to be a list of names. Okay? But I could also kind of specify how long I want that to be. So I'm going to go student names and I'm going to say I'm going to have only, we'll say, three students for the sake of this example because I want to keep that number really small. Obviously, if it was a bigger database, we'd have more than that. And so then I would go new and then string. Whoops. String. And then I could go there and that would be declared. Okay. And so that would be, oh, I need to have a number in there. If I want it to be. So I just put three there, and so that would give me. I'm not errors now. So if I look here, I can see uh, I've declared an array. It's going to be able to hold three kind of student names. Okay. Now, the way I could kind of access each one of those individual names now is I would go student names, and if I hit tab, notice it just kind of completes there for me. Uh, and then I could do those square brackets again. Now the first kind of index number, I guess I'm going to call it, in my array is actually zero. So it's weird if I have a, an array that is a length of three, the index numbers for that array would be actually zero, one, two. So that's kind of that kind of a gotcha when you're working with arrays. They start with zero. And so if I was going to name that string. Okay, I can just go then string and I'll say the first person in my list. I'm going to give them the name Fred. Okay, so what I've done there effectively is just kind of initialized 
a string array and then I put the first person in my array as Fred there. Okay, and so I'm going to just go ahead and fill three names in here. And I'm going to go uh, number one. So I said the next index number was one. And I'm going to say equals uh, Susie. And same kind of thing there. Uh, student names and two, which is really the third one. That's why, like I said, you can get, can get confusing. Um, and we'll say Bob. It's a pretty simple name. Save some typing. Okay. And so I have their names. I've initialized the array, and then I've kind of set those three names in that array to there. Now, let's say that I have another, um, the next kind of array that I'm going to talk about is going to hold phone numbers. So in this case, I'm going to say uh, student phone. Okay, equals new int. Now here's another way we can kind of declare um, arrays is after I can declare them specifically right after in the same line. So if I do these kind of squiggly brackets right after, then I could say the phone number one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sure. And then I could say the next one is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the third number, we're going to say Bob's number is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And so if I just put a semicolon at the end to kind of end that line, that's another way. I could have done that same thing with that string array here and just had those, those listed up here. So there's two different kind of ways we can initialize those values in an array. You can do it individually like this, or you can just have them kind of listed there. Okay, and so we have phone numbers there now. Let's do, the next one was with the, if they're registered or not. So let's just do a bool here and we'll kind of initialize that. Um, so we're going to say registered, let's call it registered, equals new bool. And it's going to be simpler, I think, if I just do this in a line. And we're going to say true, false, true. And I've initialized that next array the boolean array there that's going to handle their registrations. And then the next one, the last one here that I want to kind of talk about is we wanted to see if they had, we're going to use a double to store if they, or the amount that they paid. And so we're going to call that paid equals uh, new double brackets there and let's say that I want this to be three like I did the last one um, and we'll do this one the same way as the first one so again I can go paid zero I can say equals uh, we're gonna say zero point no let's say let's say Fred paid five dollars and then let's say Susie, we're going to say Susie, she's not registered yet, so we're going to say she didn't pay anything. So we're going to say 0, 0.00. And um, we're going to say Bob, I don't know, we'll say he paid. I don't know why we're charging Bob more. We're going to say Bob paid uh, 10 Okay, so what we've done is we've kind of been able to initialize a bunch of arrays here okay, and store those values. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now let's just get into kind of displaying this information um, just like we did up here. So let's see if we can access this. Now, one more kind of variable that we're going to create that's not going to be an array is let's just call create a variable here just so that we can use this as a reference. We're going to do index number just so we can show how we can manipulate our display there 
now we'd want to do this probably within an event press or something like that but for simplicity we're just going to have this variable here that we're going to change to show how we can access each of these um, individuals in our database that are stored in this array um, quickly so we're going to go index number and we're just going to call this integer index and we're going to say by default we're going to make it equal to zero so by default our index number when we use it it's going to reference actually fred and so let's uh, now just display our data just like we did up here okay and so um let's go um here we go so the first thing is our name so if we have um, we want that it's called label string label string dot text we want to display equals we're gonna say student names and we're gonna put rather than put zero in here or a value in there we're gonna actually put index because that's what we said we were gonna do and I can just change this index number here and it's gonna be able to change all of our stuff index but and that should be all we need right because this is a string already and so that should be able to work properly okay and then we're gonna go label and the second thing was our number which is our integer dot text equals student names and we're gonna go no not student names sorry uh, we said student phone and then we'll go index again so as you can see how we're gonna use that index number but now we're gonna go to string because we need to convert that to a string for display and so notice that that now is, is correct and then we're gonna go label um, didn't have an integer there. We had the next thing was whether they're registered or not. Label bool dot text equals uh, what do we call this registered. Oh, I misspelled that, but I might as well just leave it. And we're going to index again, and then dot to string. Here, close that off, and then we'll go uh, label uh, double dot text equals. I think call this paid and index as well dot to string, and let's see, we're set up there. Okay, so now. What we've done here is we should be able to show Fred's by kind of changing this index number here to whatever we want. It's going to display that information of whichever student we want. Like I said, we'd probably put this in some kind of event button press, or we could enter in a number and press a button and make that happen. But we're just going to simplify by using this index here. But notice it's going to change all of these. So let's take a look at how, how this displays now, and this should display Fred's info. And so when we access Fred, we know that Fred phone number is here. One, two, three, four, five, six. He is registered and he's paid five dollars. Okay, so fairly straightforward there. Now let's just close that. If we want to go back, now if we want to access Susie, let's change the index number now to one. Display Susie. Okay, now we have Susie. Her phone number is two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. She is not registered and she hasn't paid me anything yet. Okay, so I have that there. And then lastly, if I just change that in index number to uh, 2, and I hit start, we're going to see, okay, I have Bob, it's phone number 3456789, he is registered and he paid me 1099. Okay, so simple kind of intro to arrays and how they're used and why that is valuable is obviously because we can use these index numbers to pull that data right there's similar named variables okay and so this makes this code very readable okay so um, next kind of lesson we'll talk about how um, and what I want you guys to do uh, to hand in this assignment um, but um, we'll just kind of leave that 
here and I'll give you some hints for um, how we want to set